Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to talk about how to program a CLN in Rockwell Automation Studio 5000 software. This would be what you typically use so that you'll press one button, such in this case the green button, to turn something on, and when we let off of it, it stays on, and then we'll press another button, such in this case the red button, to turn it back off, or a basic start-stop control. In this video, we are using our Compact Logics PLC trainer. And before we get started, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. Let's start fresh on this one. Let's just start and create a completely new program. So we're going to have a 1769 L16ER BB1B, and we'll just call this our CLN. And for our expansion modules, which are the modules that we snap on the right of the PLC, it is zero. And let's create that. And then let's open up our main program and then our main routine. And let's drag down and examine on instruction. And we're going to be looking for the green button, which we have wired to input zero. Also, I don't think I stated that earlier. This trainer is still wired per the getting started guide that we did earlier on in this series. So that's going to be local colon one colon I dot data dot zero. And let's go ahead and add a description to that. And we can do that by either right clicking and going to edit main operand description or simply hitting control and then D. And that is our green button. And then let's bring down and output energize. And that is going to go to our green light, which is wired to output zero. So that'll be local colon one colon O dot data dot zero. And that is our green light. And actually, before we go any further, let's go ahead and download this program just so we can see exactly why we would even use the CLN. Now, if you need any help downloading your program or configuring drivers or anything like that, we have lessons on all that. So look down in the description. I'll have a link to all those. Okay, don't forget to put your processor back in run mode. But now when we hit our green button, our light comes on. And this could represent a motor, a solenoid, or anything. But now when we let off of it, it does go right back off. So the only time that you can make this run is yeah, when we sit here and hold this button. So if this needs to be on all day long, you're going to get really tired of holding that button. So that's why we use the seal in, is so that you don't have to sit here and hold this button all day. So what we're going to do is we're going to go, in fact, let's go ahead and do this online. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this wrong. And one, this first icon right here, start pending rung in it. So that's one way you can get to it. Also, we can right click it here and we could start pending rung edits. There's also control shift S or while you're on it, you can simply hit the enter key. And actually there's even one more way. Uh, if I go ahead and let's cancel this edit out, you can also double click on the rung and that'll start a rung edit for you. Now we're going to go up here and get our branch. We're going to bring it down. And then if you notice, you can click here and that would allow you to move it to different places if it was a more complicated rung. But you notice I really don't have any options. If we click this corner, now we get this big highlight and that's going to let us move that and straddle that green button that we have there. Another way we could do it, and we move that right back, is we could grab our examine on instruction, we could drag it into the middle of it. So there's a few ways that we could actually get these instructions moved around. Now let's drag down and examine on instruction. And what we're gonna look at is this address here for our green light. Now, some of you are like, whoa, Tim, you cannot use an output on an input instruction. Well, in the PLC's eyes, this is just a data box here. And it doesn't care if it's an input data box, an output data box, a timer data box, or anything else. It's just a bit box to add. So one, we could just type this. We can go over here and we can start typing local and doing it that way. 
But since we already have it here, we can also highlight the tag name. Now this only works with the tag name. Is we can click it and then we can drag it over here. And there, we didn't have to type. But hold on, I'm gonna hit the Control Z button just to show you that you have to hit the tag name. So I'm gonna Control Z, which is undo. And I'm gonna click green light, the text. And now let's try to drag it. See, now it drags that whole instruction and messed everything up you had. Now, if you follow me on that again, you can hit Control Z or up here is an icon that says undo on it. And that'll get us back where we were. And yeah, we want to highlight that tag name, drag it over, and okay, now we have our green light. So we can do this step by step and understand a little bit about what everything does. Let's go ahead and put that into the PLC. Okay, green light is off. I'm gonna press the green button. Now the green light comes on. I let off and yeah, it is definitely sealed in. Now the issue is it's sealed in for virtually ever because I didn't put anything in there to stop it. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the red button to stop this. Let's go back in and edit this rung again. And now let's bring down an examine off instruction. And we're going to look at local colon one colon i dot data dot two. And that is what we have the red button wired to. Now, some of you who are a little ahead of the game here are going to be concerned because I have a normally open stop button. We're going to talk about that in a future video about whether we should use a normally open or normally closed stop button. But we are going to use a normally open stop button here, mainly because that's how we wired it in our getting started exercise. So let's put that in our PLC. We press the green start button. It's on. We press the red stop button. It's off. Okay, let's talk about how this works. First, we need to be able to see these bit boxes. Let's go down to the bottom of the screen here at Studio 5000. You'll see the errors tab, which we've used already. We also have the search results and watch tab. Click on the watch tab, and let's bring that up just a little bit. Okay, and what we can do here is we can add specific tags that we want to monitor. So we could right click our green button here and go to monitor. And that's going to bring us to our controller tags. But we're seeing a lot of tags here that we don't need to see. In other words, right now we need to see the green button. Ooh, we also, I didn't label that red button. And okay, look how quickly I found that green button. Now this right here is the red button, but it's much more difficult to find. So let's, let's go ahead and label that. That is our red button. That's a lot easier to see now. Okay, we're looking at our green button our red button, but I also want to look at the green light as well. It's down here. And by the time I get it open, it's going to be really tough. All right, so we could see them all, but one, there's a lot of static in between. There's a lot of zeros there. And right now it's a zero, but if we are an actual machine, it may be flashing ones and zeros and everything. Is I want to look at just these three right here. So let's go back to our main program and on this watch window, let's put in these tags. So the green button is local colon one colon I dot data dot zero. And then let's put in our red button, which is local colon one colon I dot data dot two. And then let's put in our green light, which is local colon one colon o dot data dot zero. Okay, so now we can see all of our values right here in a one convenient spot. And they're all zeros right now. And so I'm going to press and hold the green light and we see that we get a one in its bit box. We also see we have a one in the green lights bit box. Now I'm going to let off and you see we have a zero in the green buttons bit box, but we still have a one in the green lights bit box. And when I press and I'm gonna hold the red button, then we have a one in its bit box and our green light now has a zero. So if you didn't watch my basic bit instruction lesson, you may wanna back up to it. 
But in it, we talk about that this instruction right here is not a normally closed instruction. It's not a, is it true instruction? This instruction goes and looks for a one. Where? At local colon one dot data dot zero. And for the rest of this, I am going to shorten this to input zero, just so I don't have to say all that. So it looks for a one at input zero. Does it have one? No. So this instruction is going to be false. Now it's going to encounter this end of branch here. And when it encounters it, it goes to the next level down. And this instruction, even though it's looking at an output, does the exact same thing. It goes and looks for a one. Where? At local colon one colon o dot data dot zero, which we're going to now call output zero. Do I have one? No. So this is false. Then we're going to get to this instruction. And this is a go look for a zero. It is not a normally closed contact. So it's going to look for one at local colon one colon i dot data dot two, which we're now going to call input two. Does it have one? Yes. So it is true. Now be really careful saying that this green is true because in a few videos, we're going to show how green is not true. But mainly this goes and looks for a zero. Does it have one? Yes. So it is true. Now in order for, oops, leave that up. Now in order for an instruction on, we'll call it the right side to be true, it needs to have a continuous path of trues from left to right. So since this instruction and this instruction were both false, we do not have a continuous path of trues from left to right. And this is going to be false. And as I said in that video, a false output energize does something. And it's very important to understand that concept. A false output energize goes and writes a zero. Where to? Output zero, which we have right here. So every time this rung scans, it is writing a zero to that output. And okay, how often is that? Well, let's just right click our main program here and go to properties and monitor. Okay, so it looks like about every eight milliseconds, this instruction right now is writing a zero to output zeros bit box. And it doesn't care if it has a zero in it, it's still gonna write another zero. But okay, so let's walk through this really slow now though. So we are going, in fact, I'm going to switch mine into program mode just so we can slow time down really big. So I'm going to switch to program mode just mainly so we can walk through this very initial pressing of the green button and see what happens. So we're going to press the green button and I know it shows green here and yeah in this case that means that's true but still let's walk through it and make sure we understand is this instruction right here goes and looks for a one. Where? At input zero. Do I have one? Yes. So it is true. Now it gets here. It doesn't care that that upper branch is true. It's still going to go to this next one here. And this instruction says, go look for a one. Where? At output zero. Do I have one? No. So this is false. Then it goes over here and says, Go look for a zero. Where? At input two. Do I have one? Yes. So it is true. So right now this upper branch is true. This lower one is false, but that does give us a continuous path of trues from left to right. And that's going to make this output energize true. And a true output energize goes and writes a one. Where to? output zero. Now what one, let's make sure we understand this. Why is it not writing a one right now? Well, that's because I'm in program mode and the PLC does not execute these instructions in program mode, but that's going to write a one right here. So then I'm going to let off of it. And let's just, in fact, I don't even have to imaginary write a one. I'm going to write a one there because that's what this program just did. And then I'm going to let off the green button. So now this instruction here goes and looks for a one. Where at input zero? Do I have one? No. So it is false. It's going to get here. It's going to go to the next branch. And this instruction goes, looks for a one. Where at output zero? Do I have one? Yes. 
on the previous scan, this wrote a one to it. Now, some of you are probably asking, well, why is the light not on? Well, in program mode, all the outputs go to zero. Actually, all the outputs go to the state they're configured to go to in program mode. And by default, it is zero. That might be a kind of neat exercise, although I can't think of a reason why in program mode you'd want to turn an output on. But anyway, squirrel, that instruction is true. So now it's going to go here and go look for a zero. Do I have one? Yes, so it's true. So this upper branch is now false, but this lower one is true. So I have a continuous path of truths from left to right, and that is going to go right a one. Where to? Output zero. And that's going to keep that output sealed in. So at that point, we have the red button. And the red button, anytime that it is a one, this instruction is going to be false. And that's going to make this instruction false. And that's what's going to turn it back off. So let's switch it back to run mode. And one thing for the next video, do you notice that I had a one in that output bit box, but our green light didn't come on. And also, if you notice in our watch window now, we have a zero here. We're gonna cover that in a video about power up coming up, but just remember that one for later. But now we press the green button, our green light comes on. We press the red button, our green light goes off. And that's really all there is to it. But I say that with big warning of, I know a lot of people that even, well, one, they use this instruction because it, you know, it's just something you see often, but they really don't understand how it works. So study on this one. Make sure you understand that when we press the green button, the green light comes on. But when we let off of it, it's not magic that's keeping it on. It is because this bit box still has a one in it. And then we press the red button, it goes off. This is a really good exercise to really start understanding that these instructions right here, all they do is they write to these bit boxes. There is no magic thing in the background that is holding an output on when you do something or you know, sealing it in, it is that walking through this logic, we managed to write ones and zeros to these boxes. So I hope this video has been helpful. Again, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Till next time. Hi, hey, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.